It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ViewSonic XG2402. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the monitor. Um, you can't see it very clearly, and perhaps you can't see it very clearly in the video, but the buttons actually have slightly different shapes, um, ones with different functions. These are kind of pointy, they're shaped like arrows, um, and that's because they're sort of navigation buttons. This one has a different shape, this one has a different shape, and this one is the power button, so it goes down a bit further than the others. There's also a little blue power LED, a little pinprick blue power LED, which I find pretty undistracting. Um, and that glows amber when the monitor's in standby. And I'll check in the OSD, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think you might be able to turn that off in the OSD, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. The first button, if you press that, it has a little G icon, all of the, uh, you can't really see it in dim light, um, but it does have little painted button labels to label the functions. So that has a little G icon, and that is various uh, game mode presets. Um, I'll just check the correct gaming settings is actually what they're called. I do apologize. So there are various different modes there. Um, most of these I don't like but that's not unique to this monitor. I don't generally like pre uh, presets that sort of mess things up, but Color X just looks sort of bright, a bit faded. There's FPS, uh, which actually looks all right, but I mean, most of these sort of restrict the options which you can uh, actually tweak, or they set them to certain values and then lock off lots of the options as well. So there's various different options. Um, but the the three I prefer, Custom 1, Custom 2 and Custom 3, you can rename them, which is why I've got one called Test, one called LBL, Low Blue Light, um, and I, but I'll go through all of this when I enter the main menu system. And there's also a little quick way of adjusting the volume, or fairly quick way of adjusting the volume of the integrated speakers, or anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack. If you press any of the other buttons, other than the power button, you can get into the main menu. This is laid out in ViewSonic's usual modern style. At the bottom you can see a little bar, um, which is sort of an energy use bar, but really it just reflects the brightness of the monitor, and it gives you a percentage of uh, the current brightness that's set on the monitor. Um, I can tell immediately that I don't have it on my preferred preset, um, so I'm just going to change that. And there's also something that shows you the refresh rate that you've currently got the monitor set at, and I'll come on to that shortly. You can also see that the button labels are now clearer, the little on-screen labels for the buttons now. The first menu is gaming settings, which I've already been through, except you have some extra flexibility here. So you can see various uh, gaming settings have other settings associated with them. Uh, the custom modes are the most flexible because you can change all of this. So the first three, custom one, or test as I've called it now, LBL, custom two, or custom three. Rampage response, that's the pixel overdrive setting of the monitor, which is explored in the review. There's various different settings there. Monitor hertz cap, which is a bit of a pain to be honest. This is supposed to basically change the refresh rate um, of the monitor and also your system but for some reason it just changes the refresh rate of the monitor and it doesn't change the value in Windows or your graphics driver so you're actually left with some strange kind of pseudo frame rate and you get frame skipping and a really dodgy uh, experience so um, I mean I explain this a little bit more in the review but just keep this set to native don't bother about 60 Hertz or 100 Hertz on this keep this set to native and then set your refresh rate in game or in Windows or in your graphics driver and even though it says native 144 Hertz you can set the monitor to 60 Hertz or 100 Hertz or any of the other supported um, fresh rates and it'll work just fine so don't worry about this monitor Hertz cap it seems to be a sort of broken feature on this monitor black stabilization this is, like a, the, this is a bit like BenQ's black equalizer but a bit more gentle a bit more flexible actually you can set that to various values between uh, one or 0 and 22 and this just alters the gamma curve 
and uh, slightly shifts the gamma curve to adjust the level of detail in dark scenes so you can have a competitive advantage in games for example. So I'll just show you the Legon website. Uh, the black level test is a good way of demonstrating approximately what this does. It doesn't You won't see exactly what I see but you'll get, this is a sort of default 11. If you adjust this, if you lower it enough, dark shades become darker and they blend in more. It doesn't affect the black point of the monitor so there's no advantage in terms of contrast in that respect. If you increase it beyond the default, those darker shades get a bit lighter and more visible so that could give you a competitive edge in a game. There is advanced DCR, dynamic contrast ratio, which is explored in the review. Brightness, colour adjust, so there are a few settings here, but so you can adjust the contrast colour saturation. Uh, this is like the NVIDIA Digital Vibrance Control. So this is a digital saturation control except it's on the monitor rather than the GPU in this case. And if you increase that it just pulls shades closer to the edge of the colour gamut. So you do get reduction a reduction in shade variety because it doesn't change the colour gamut itself. Um, but it can make some shades look more saturated which some users prefer. If you reduce that it decreases the saturation. Um, and if you reduce that sufficiently, the image actually becomes very faded and then eventually it'll become monochrome. But I just advise leaving that at 50 for the most natural and accurate colour reproduction possible. Gamma. Various different gamma settings, which is good. Um, as I come on to in the review, this panel is notoriously uh, unreliable in terms of its gamma performance. Some units have the average gamma at pretty much 2.2, other ones not so much. So you can set various different settings, it gives you good flexibility. And on this model, um, if you sort of find that these steps are too extreme for your liking, the steps up in gamma, there is uh, the possibility to fine tune it more by just using slight changes to the black stabilization option as well. There's a blue light filter, a low blue light setting, which reduces the blue light output on the monitor and you can set that uh, between 0 which is off and 100 which is the greatest effect. View scale, so there are various different options there which this monitor can sort of emulate, various different screen sizes and aspect ratios. There's a, a one to one pixel mapping mode as well or you can have it simulate various other different screen sizes. Rename, so this allows you to rename the custom presets, which is what I've done here. So I've got test, which is my test settings, and I've got LBL, which stands for low blue light. So this is basically just my test settings, but instead of changing the color values with this, I've just got the uh, blue light filter on full, and I use that in the evening for relaxing viewing, just for my own viewing pleasure. And there's an option to reset everything um, on this particular preset to the factory defaults. AMD FreeSync on or off. I'm currently using an NVIDIA GPU and you can turn it on but it doesn't actually turn FreeSync on because it's an NVIDIA GPU. It doesn't do anything actually so you can turn that on if you want as an NVIDIA user but there's absolutely no point. If you've got a compatible AMD GPU you can use FreeSync on this monitor and that is explored in the review. Monitor Hertz cap which I've been through. Rampage X and that's just this uh, little lighting feature on the rear of the monitor so I've turned that on. It's quite a dark room. You can actually see a sort of gentle um, red glow, particularly under the monitor. I've got the monitor pretty close to the wall. It's, uh, it's not really bright enough to be considered a bias light or anything like that, but you can see it in a darker room. And you certainly can see it if you're behind the monitor. You can see there's a little sort of chevron of red on this side. There's another chevron of red on the other side as well. So. That's just that, what that feature is, Rampage X lighting. I'm not really too fussed about it, to be honest. I don't mind it being on, but it doesn't really give me any pleasure. Um, those things just face my wall. The light's not very bright from in front of the monitor, so I don't really care too much about that. Next, there's display. And I've already been through these because they're just replicating some things which are available in the gaming settings. But there are some other presets called view mode on this monitor and if you're using one of the view mode 
presets. You can't adjust all of the things on gaming settings, which I've just shown you, but you can adjust these things. So you can adjust uh, the color temperature. There's various different settings, sRGB, bluish, cool, native and warm. I go through some of the more useful ones in the review. Or well, there's full colour control which allows you to manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. As I do with my test settings of course. Colour adjust. You can change the colour space if you need to for some strange compatibility reason. But just use auto. Uh, RGB is the standard for pretty much every system so just um, if you use auto it'll select it for you, you don't have to worry about this anyway. Colour range, again, if you, do, if you don't know what this means, just leave it on auto, it's fine. Um, but if you're using certain games consoles, they can actually uh, use a limited range signal a bit better, so that's what you'd uh, select limited range for. Full range for normal PC usage and most newer games consoles. Again, gamma settings which I've been through. Colour saturation and black stabilisation, which I've been through because they're in the gaming settings as well. There's image adjust, which has various settings I've already been through because they're also on gaming settings. There's the uh, view scale, contrast, brightness and the blue light filter. The sharpness and overscan, which are greyed out um, in most of the presets or possibly all of the presets. I mean, I've filled around and I can't get them to not be greyed out, so I'm not sure what that's all about. But anyway, um, the sharpness is all configured optimally by default. I know some users like to change that, but that's just according to preferences. Um, it's not the sake of being accurate, etc, etc. Overscan is something which applies to some older games consoles or older devices. It's not really relevant to modern systems. Perhaps that's why it's greyed out, I'm not sure. Input select allows you to manually select the input used by the monitor. So there's HDMI, two HDMI ports um, and display port. View mode, so these are alternative presets used by the monitor. Standard, which is the factory default. Movie, web, text, Mac and mono. Um, I don't really like these much. They cut off too many of the options because you can't adjust the gaming settings, um, settings with these active. So I would prefer to use one of these custom presets if you like to tweak things. You can't even tweak the Rampage Response Pixel Overdrive setting, for example, in the standard view mode or any of the other view modes. Um, audio Adjust allows you to adjust the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack or mute that. And then the Setup menu. And this allows you to adjust the language that the OSD is displayed in. There's an information section which shows you the uh, various information about the monitor. One of the more useful things is vertical frequency. If you've got, uh, don't worry about the point 0.2, it's just strange rounding, uh, it's 144 hertz. The, if you've got FreeSync active, um, that will actually change according to your frame rate as your frame rate changes, so that's a good way of knowing that FreeSync work, works and is doing its thing. There's resolution notice. Um, and this just puts a screen, a little on-screen prompt to say you're not running the native resolution if you're not running the native resolution. Boot up screen, so it just has the uh, little ViewSonic logo and all of that when you uh, first turn the monitor on. Or you can turn that off if you prefer. Um, I don't believe it speeds up the process of turning the monitor on, it just doesn't display the information when it's first turning on. OSD pivot, so if you're using the monitor in portrait, then you turn that on so you can read the menu properly, portrait orientation. OSD timeout, which is a period uh, in seconds after which the OSD will automatically disappear from the screen after the last button press, or you can manually exit it with the uh, back arrow a couple of times, or the back button. OSD background uh, has a solid background or you can have a sort of a transparent version instead. Power indicator, so as I was saying before, um, I did remember correctly, you can turn the little blue power indicator off if you prefer. So there you go, it's off now, even though the monitor's on. 
I don't mind it, I just leave it on. Um, it doesn't really bother me. There's auto power off, and all that means is the monitor will, if you just, if it loses a signal, um, the light goes amber, it'll just turn itself on to standby, or a deeper state of standby, I should say, as if you've turned, as if you pressed the monitor's power button, even though you haven't. So it'll automatically do that after a certain amount of time. I haven't really tested the feature out, so I don't know what time that is. Uh, the monitor can be automatically set to go to sleep after a certain amount of time. I believe it'll give you a message on the screen after this time elapses, um, and then if you press one of the buttons, it won't go to sleep or something like that. That's what they usually do anyway. Eco mode. This will just uh, reduce the brightness slightly from what whatever you've got it set to. So I've got it set to 43%, and if I choose optimize, it reduces it to amazingly 41%, or conserve 40%, but maybe it makes a bigger difference if you're using a higher brightness. It doesn't do anything you can't achieve with manual brightness adjustments yourself anyway. DDC slash CI, which is the plug and play functionality of the monitor. I'm talking really quickly now because my uh, <laughs> battery on my camera is about to die, which isn't great. Uh, this just allows you to use certain software to control the monitor, uh, the monitor's OSD. DisplayPort 1.1, that's just a compatibility feature if you're using an older GPU. Just leave that set to off for most users. Um, there's memory recall, which will set everything to the factory defaults. Phew! So that was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the ViewSonic XG2402. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that and also a link to information about how you can support the work that we do in the description of this video.